Welcome up. In this episode, we will talk about socialism and its origins. Coming up. Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and on this channel I explain political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people, just like you. Today we're talking about socialism. For starters, socialism is an ideology, a leftist one to be precise, and one of the leading ones of the 19th century. If you don't know what an ideology is, check this video I prepared a few months ago. Yet, socialism is also a huge container that includes several different currents of what this ideology could do for society. To give you a reference, in his 1924 Dictionary of Socialism, Angelo Rappoport wrote 40 different definitions of the concept, explaining that there are many mansions in the house of socialism. Hence, this video will not focus on communism, or as Marx liked to define it, scientific socialism, as much as on early and utopian socialism. In general, socialism is a socio-economic doctrine that advocates for public ownership of means of production, resources, as well as everything that people produce. Society should own and control property for the benefit of all its members. Although socialism is in opposition to capitalism, the former has a much longer history, but it cannot be denied that industrialization and capitalism are what reignited the socialist thought. In the context of capitalism, meaning a free market with private means of production, socialists complain that the necessary result of private property is unfair and exploitative concentrations of wealth and power in the hands of few people who then use their wealth and power to reinforce their dominance in society. It seems relevant also nowadays, right? True freedom and true equality require social control of the resources that provide the basis for prosperity in any society. Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels made this point in their Manifesto of the Communist Party, when they proclaimed that in a socialist society the condition for the redevelopment of each is the free development of all. This conviction nevertheless leaves room for socialists to disagree among themselves about two key points. The first concerns the extent and the kind of property that society should own or control. Some socialists thought that almost everything except personal items should be public property, for instance in the society envisioned by Sir Thomas More in his book Utopia, dating 1516. Others, however, allow private ownership of farms, shops, or other small and medium-sized businesses. The second disagreement concerns the way in which society is to exercise its control of prosperity and other resources. In this case, there are centralists and decentralists. The former want to invest public control of property in central authority, such as the state, as in the case of the Soviet Union. The latter believe that decisions about the use of public property and resources should be made at the local level by the people who will be affected by those decisions. As anticipated, the origins of socialism as a political movement are in the Industrial Revolution, whereas its intellectual roots reach way back. Socialist ideas were a central part of Plato's Republic, depicting a society in which men and women of the guardian class shared not only material goods, but also spouses and children. Early Christian communities also practiced the sharing of goods and labor, and several monastic orders continue the practices today. Christianity and Platonism were discussed by Moore in his Utopia, that recommended communal ownership as a way of controlling pride, envy and greed. In the book, land and houses are common property, everyone works for no less than two years on communal farms, and people change houses every 10 years. Money has been abolished, and people are free to take what they need from common storehouses. This book is not so much a blueprint for a socialist society, as it is a critique of the mistake of Christian societies of his day. During the French Revolution, journalist François-Noël Babeuf argued that the ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity require the abolition of private property and common enjoyment of the land and its fruits. Of course, he was then executed, accused of conspiring to overthrow the government. As you see, most of these ideas were agrarian. With the emergence of capitalism, there were conservative radicals that envisioned a future in which industrial power and capitalism were divorced, because this union made many workers extremely poor. The term socialist came into use around 1830 to describe these thinkers, some of which became known as utopian socialists. This expression comes from the fact that most of them simply envisioned utopias, ideal societies that could be concretely realized as political realities. One of the most famous was the French aristocrat Claude-Henri de Saint-Simon. 
he did not call for public ownership of productive property, but advocated public control through central planning, in which scientists, industrialists and engineers would anticipate social needs and direct the energies of society to meet them. Such a system would be more efficient than capitalism. As he believed, history moved through stages, and feudalism, with its landed nobility and monotheistic religion, was giving space to industrialism, based on science, reason and the division of labor. In these circumstances, Saint-Simon argued that it was optimal to put the economic arrangements of society in the hands of its most knowledgeable and productive members for the benefit of all. Another early socialist was Robert Owen, even though he was a man of action rather than a thinker. Yet, he was an industrialist. He owned a few textile mills in Scotland that were both profitable and, by the standards of the time, humane, because he did not employ children under the age of 10. Yes, standards were very low. Owens argued that changing the conditions would have helped people to change. In 1825, he decided to establish a model of social organization on land he had purchased in the US state of Indiana. The experiment, known as New Harmony, was foreseen as a self-sufficient cooperative community in which property was commonly owned. The experiment failed within a few years and costed Owen most of his fortune, but he then promoted social cooperation, trade unions and cooperative business. François-Marie Charles Fourier was another French socialist. He believed that selfishness and deception were a constitutive element of modern society because institutions like marriage, the male-dominated family and the competitive market confined people to repetitive labor. Fourier envisioned a society that would align with human needs and desires. Phalanstery, as he called it, was a largely self-sufficient community of about 1,600 people organized according to the principle of attractive labor, which holds that people will work voluntarily and happily if their work engages their talents and interests. Since at some point all tasks become tiresome, each member of the phalanstery would have several occupations. Fourier left room for private ownership, but inequality was to be limited. Another utopian socialist was Etienne Cabet. He wrote the 1840 novel Travels in Icaria, where Icaria is a self-sufficient community of roughly one million people resorting to industry and farming. He did not limit to write the book, he founded this community in Illinois, but dissension among Icarians prompted when Cabet left in 1856. In the 1830s and 40s, other socialists in France included Louis Blanc, Louis-Auguste Blanqui and Pierre-Joseph Proudhon. Blanc was the author of The Organization of Labor, a scheme of state-financed but worker-controlled social workshops that would guarantee work for everyone and lead gradually to a socialist society. Blanqui was a revolutionary who spent more than 33 years in prison for insurrectionary activities because he believed that power could only be seized through revolution. Once in power, the revolutionaries would form a temporary dictatorship that would confiscate the property of the wealthy and establish state control of major industries. For the record, this is what was realized in practice by Lenin and the other Bolsheviks in 1917 in Russia. Finally, in 1840, Proudhon wrote What is property? to which he answered theft. In contrast to a society dominated by capitalists, Proudhon's ideal was a society based on small cooperatives. Such a society would function through products exchange based on needs. Still, Proudhon was an anarchist that believed the state to be a fundamentally coercive institution. In the next video on socialism, we will talk about communism or Marxian socialism. The lecture is over. Thank you for watching.